How many masks can you name that aren't unsettling in at least some way? Even a surgical mask can seem a bit spooky in the right setting. Therefore, it won't take much to scare the living daylights out of you when we show you these masks. From a toilet mask to a gas mask for babies, here are 15 of the most unsettling masks in history. Number 15, Alexander Peden's Mask. Okay, so we're not gonna lie. This mask looks like it might have been made out of a serial killer's victims. The Reverend Alexander Pedden, also known as Prophet Pedden. Fortunately, most of it is crafted from fabric and leather, with only the beard and wig featuring real hair, and potentially some false teeth and feathers in there too. The mask belongs to a man named Alexander Peden, and was discovered in a cottage near Cumnock in 1840, along with a sword. It is now on display at the National Museum of Scotland. So what makes this mask so special, and of course, terrifying? Alexander Peden was an outlawed covenanting minister who actively opposed changes made by Charles II to a covenant agreement. The agreement meant that the king became the spiritual head of churches in Scotland rather than Jesus Christ. Over 350 ministers were forced from their churches and had to become outlaws. Anyone found to be out and proud against the covenant could be imprisoned or killed. Many chose to die, which meant that period during the 1660s became known as the Killing Times. Alexander was a preacher who did so illegally during this time. He wore the mask to avoid capture and would sleep in caves and shelters. He was on the run for over 11 years, was imprisoned, then escaped. He managed to avoid capture until he died at age 60. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14, Japanese No Mask. Today's modern actors have it easy. When they want to look sad, they put on a frown. When they want to look happy, they put on a smile. But what do you do if you have to wear a Japanese No Mask? You have to get very creative. Japanese no masks are wooden, expressionless masks carved out of cypress wood. Their eyes stare blankly, and there's no way of knowing whether the wearer is fuming mad or delightfully happy. Therefore, the actors are very skilled in their use. They have been using them in musical dramas for nearly 1,000 years since the 14th century, and know how to use head angles to make the audiences know what they're feeling. As it turns out, gestures and movement can tell as much of a story about your emotions as what your face can. Which makes sense when you learn what no actually means. The definition is talent, skill, and craft in art performance. And they're not wrong. Actors wearing these masks can show a wide range of emotions while only showing a blank slab of wood. Number 13, Dirt Eater Mask. How do you feel about sleeping tonight? Do you need to? Well, even if you did, after seeing this mask, you won't be able to. Perhaps one of the most unsettling masks in history, this mask was designed to stop people from eating dirt. As it turns out, dirt eating was quite a common practice among slaves during the 16th century to the 19th century. The habit started in Western Africa, and the most delicious dirt was even gathered to be traded. The owners of the slaves were told by doctors that they shouldn't allow them to eat dirt, otherwise they might become depressed, suffer from stomach aches, dropsy, poor appetite, shortness of breath, 
and vertigo. Therefore, to stop them from eating dirt while laboring on their land, they fitted their slaves with these awful masks. They not only had to wear them for the whole day, but often in some terribly hot conditions. They were made from steel and patina and could only be removed by their owners. Fortunately, the practices of dirt eating, mask wearing, and slavery all died out. Number 12. Madame Rowley's Toilet Mask If it's not the name of toilet mask that'll put you off wearing this mask, then it's the actual design of it that will. We're not sure why Madame Rowley, a milliner and dressmaker from Ohio, ever thought this was a good idea. The mask went by the name of Toilet Mask or Face Glove and was patented in 1875 when Helen was 51. The mask was made out of flexible, soft rubber and was designed to beautify someone's skin while they slept. Of course, back then, we didn't have the best face masks and cleansing products. Supposedly, as the person slept with the mask on, the rubber would make the skin sweat to open the pores. That sweat would then clarify and soften the skin. The entire mask was promoted as being one that could create more beautiful, healthier, bleached, and preserved skin. If you had blotchy skin, pimples, eruptions, or any skin imperfection, then it wasn't uncommon for you to put on this ghastly mask and supposedly see results. It's unknown whether anyone did or not, though. Number 11. Splatter Masks We hate to think what people's faces look like who didn't wear this mask because even wearing this form of protection is ghastly enough. The Splatter Mask was a form of protective face mask that was issued to tank corps personnel during the First World War. If you had to look through viewports, then this mask would protect you from shrapnel. It might not have been the most comfortable piece of uniform, but neither would a piece of metal through the eyeball, so most soldiers would have been more than happy to wear it. And the British Mark 1 V tanks these particular masks? It had metal eye covers, a leather constructed mask, and chainmail skirting around the mouth and chin. There were various styles of the mask produced, and some had artillery badges on the front. Most of them were secured around the head with leather straps and were designed to work hand-in-hand -hand with helmets. However, some were also designed to connect to the helmet as well. It didn't tend to matter which design you had, so long as you had some form of protection as a member of a tank crew. Number 10. Baby Gas Masks if you thought Michael Myers' mask in Halloween was terrifying, then you haven't seen gas masks for babies. While they weren't supposed to be scary, there's something not quite right about those three words. Baby gas mask. As it turns out, the words are as horrible as the mask itself. During World War II, the British government was worried about the Germans dropping bombs of poisonous gas on Britain. Therefore, they gave everyone gas masks, including babies. The gas mask was designed for children up to two years old. Parents had to place the baby inside the mask so that its head was inside the steel helmet. They could then see out the visor. The canvas around the bottom was then strapped around the baby's bottom like a nappy. This canvas also had a rubber coating to stop any gas from getting through it. But it wasn't perfect, nor did it seem entirely safe. During educational demonstrations for parents, babies actually fell asleep in them. As it turns out, there may not have been enough airflow from the pump, resulting in near suffocation. Fortunately, Britain never had to put them to the test in a real situation. Number 9. Death Masks Death is not something that is traditionally pretty. Funeral directors do an amazing job preparing people's loved ones, but the reality is they will never look as good as they did alive. So it kind of makes sense that death masks exist. These masks have existed throughout history, including during ancient Egypt and the Middle Ages. In Egypt, they were common because Egyptians believed the masks on the faces of the deceased would help them to find their bodies in the afterlife. 
In African culture, the masks could supposedly give the dead power. But when they were used during the Middle Ages, they were more of a way for people to preserve memories of the dead. Masks were even made for famous people and put on display for people to see, such as Mary, Queen of Scots. Masks were even made of complete strangers, such was the case with an unknown woman retrieved from the River Seine in Paris. She had apparently drowned herself and was retrieved during the 1870s or 1880s. The morgue attendant thought the young woman was quite beautiful, so made a mask of her face out of plaster. It was reproduced as a form of art in the years that followed. Number 8. Masks of Shame now, this is a type of mask that could exist in today's modern day without too much effort. In fact, it might even act as a deterrent for many people who had been thinking about breaking the law. Masks of shame were quite common during the Middle Ages up until the 18th century in Europe. If you had sinned in some way, such as being a gossiper, being dirty, a fool, or something similar, then you had to wear an uncomfortable metal mask that reflected what you had done. If you had been a fool, the mask had donkey ears. If you did something dirty, the mask often had a pig nose. Some even made whistling sounds every time the wearer breathed, which caused people to laugh at them. If having to wear a hot, heavy mask in public wasn't enough, those convicted of their sins or crimes then had to stand in the stocks. Here, people could throw rotten tomatoes at them or jeer and taunt them. Unfortunately, the majority of people who had to wear these masks were women, for they were punished for a lack of subservience to their menfolk. Number 7. Vintage Halloween Masks Halloween masks today are fairly tame. Kids get around the neighborhoods dressed as clowns, cute little builders, and bakers, and essentially anything their parents manage to pick up at the last minute from a local store. But back in the first half of the 20th century, Halloween masks and outfits were nothing short of terrifying. In fact, if you didn't know it was Halloween when people wore them, you'd likely run away from your front door screaming in terror. Halloween, or All Hallows Evening, was celebrated on October 31st, even all those years ago. Then, the next day, there was a festival in honor of the saints, followed by All Souls Day on November 2nd to honor the faithful who have departed. People would light candles on graveyards while wearing spooky masks, believing that the fire got rid of evil spirits. People would also flock to the cemeteries to bless them. The tradition took hold fairly early early on, and children would dress up in masks and costumes to spend a day outside of their normal. The hair-raising masks of Halloween from back then show just how tame the ones we have today are. We must admit, we're kinda relieved. Number 6. Vissard Mask most women today think nothing of going to their local salon for a full body spray tan. After all, being pasty white means you haven't seen enough sun. If you haven't seen enough sun, then you couldn't possibly let people see you wearing shorts and skirts. Believe it or not, quite the opposite was true back in 16th century Europe. If you showed any signs of a suntan on your face, then you couldn't possibly be out in public. Because shock horror, a tanned face meant you were probably poor and worked outside. Ew. But that was a bit of an impossible task. For even attending a garden party as a rich and fancy lady meant there was a high risk of being tanned by the sun. Don't worry, they found a solution. And that was the Vissard mask. The mask was designed for upper class ladies who wanted to make sure their faces remained pale and unmarked by the sun. They consisted of an outer layer of velvet, pressed paper on the inside, then a silk lining. There were also small holes for the mouth, nose, and eyes. Very few of these masks have ever been found, and we really hope they don't make a comeback. Number five. Iroquois False Face Society Mask There have been many medicinal societies throughout history, but few as well known as the False Face Society. 
This society, made up of Iroquois Native American people, was known for wooden face masks that it would use in healing rituals. If you became healed through the rituals, then you were able to become a member. There's been a lot of interest in the masks in recent years, but not just because they're interesting. Some Iroquois people who were not members of the society were producing and selling the masks to collectors, something that was viewed as insulting to the society. The design of the masks varied, but they tended to share similar face features. The eyes had metal accents and were deep set in the mask. The noses sat crooked and bent on the face. They were also often painted in black and red and had tobacco pouches tied into their hair. Sometimes, horse tail hair formed the back of the mask, but corn husks and buffalo hair was also acceptable. The masks were also made of basswood. In 1995, a statement was issued online that said masks could no longer be sold to the public. Number 4. Kukuri Masks if you find yourself in Bulgaria at any time in your life, then try and align your visit with the Kukuri Festival. <laughs> Dating back hundreds of years, a Kukuri Festival is an exciting tradition that truly shows off the culture of towns and cities across Bulgaria. Each year, people dress up with unique masks and costumes to keep their towns and cities safe from evil spirits. The festival normally happens around early winter or midwinter, and the masks have bells, horns, and all manner of weird and wonderful accessories on them. The giant metal bells clang as the townspeople dance and drive away evil. By doing so, they are also welcoming good to pay a visit. These festivals are also designed to invoke fertility in people, agriculture, and animals, while also being a coming-of-age ceremony for young men. What kind of costumes and masks are used can depend on where each festival is held in Bulgaria. The largest one is in Pernik, which is home to the International Bulgarian Festival of Masquerade Games. It is known as the Serva Festival and is now on UNESCO's list of protected non-material cultural heritage. Number 3. The Plague Mask. Okay, so the plague mask doesn't actually seem all that terrifying in this day and age. In fact, we probably feel quite empathic, for we know exactly what it's like to live in a world overtaken with a disease that killed several thousand people. We're just a little bit more informed about the best equipment to manage it, and this plague mask wasn't it. Back in the 17th century in Europe, the Black Plague was wiping out people in their millions. It caused swollen lymph nodes, black skin, and other foul symptoms until the afflicted eventually succumbed to their illness. Of course, physicians still did their best to tend to the sick and dying, but they couldn't do it without protection. They wore head-to-toe costumes and a mask that appeared to have a long beak like a bird. They wore these masks and outfits while peddling their antidotes, witnessing wills, and performing autopsies. Today, our personal protective equipment, or PPE, tends to offer a bit more protection. But still, if the coronavirus of 2020 is anything to go by, we are still not too advanced for a pandemic to sweep through the world. Number 2. Vendetta Mask A mask that has appeared throughout history and still bears quite a lot of relevance is the Vendetta Mask. The mask has a smile, red cheeks, an upturned mustache, and a pointed vertical beard. To look at it, it's hard to work out what it's for, but only if you don't know the backstory. The mask is actually a depiction of Guy Fawkes, the man who had a plot to blow up London's House of Lords on November 5th, 1605, and on a day that has come to be known as Guy Fawkes Day. The mask then became part of a plot in V for Vendetta, before appearing in the film adaptation of it in 2005. Since then, the very same eerie mask has become a symbol of many anti-government and anti-establishment protests around the world, such as Anonymous, the Occupy Movement, Anonymous for the Voiceless, 
and Project Chanology. Still, ask most people and they will relate it purely to the film V for Vendetta, which means it's a great mask to wear on Guy Fawkes night or even to celebrate Halloween. Number 1. Venetian Masks A high standard of living was not common throughout Europe many centuries ago. But surprisingly, there was a city in Italy that was particularly affluent and remains as such today. That city is Venice. The city's market economy was booming and everyone was wrapped up in their dealings under the Republic. The problem was, the city was quite small and most people didn't want others to know what deals they were making, what hands they were shaking, and how they were making their mega bucks. That's where Venetian masks come in. Masks with fur, gems, feathers, fabric, and paper mache had been part of Venetian culture for centuries, but they also had a purpose. People could go about their business with no one knowing what they were doing or who they were. Men could be women, women could be men, and no one was any the wiser. However, some security problems started to come into play, so governments ended up passing laws that meant you could only wear the masks during the carnival season. Even today, these art pieces are seen all over Venice. As it turns out, clown faces and surgical masks aren't so spooky after all. Some of these were downright terrifying. Which one sent shivers up your spine the most, or were you completely unfazed? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!